Kim Dash. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. All right. So, SJ. SJ, the way this, the way the uh, PDA, PD arrays work, right? So, the way it work is, like, you say the top of the box and the bottom of the box is um, what you're looking at, right? Remember that line in the middle is equilibrium, all right? So okay, let's come. I'm gonna try to walk it through with price act. Let me drop down off this daily, go to an owl, and hopefully we can get some better examples on this right here. And let's go to the ES on the owl. All right. Hide this stuff over here. Okay. So um shrink it down. Let me look at some real quick. Okay. All right. This look like it came to an order block. So we're gonna go there. All right. So that looked like it came to an order block. Let me stretch this out a little bit. So right here yes price came to an order block right there okay so <clears throat> all right so here we go price we're gonna act like we're gonna act okay we're gonna act like we can't see where the price came in and took that out yet right so we're going to put it over there where we act like we can't see where price took that out yet, right? So price was trading here. We went down, consolidated, and we got ping out. See, we got a ping out right there, right? So we took off. This is like the, the lowest low to the highest high, right? But you see right here, we came up, and we like pulled back right there, and then we took off again. So we had a little break right around here. We had a little break right around here. So either this low here or this low here these are different points these are different break points where you can run fibs from right so if you run in fibs from the the lowest low to the highest high right now this um order block right here is a right at equilibrium close enough for government work it's right at equilibrium right then you got a fair value gap at discount you got a fair value gap right there at discount all inside this liquidity void right there right so if you go to this low right here now this um order block is in a deep discount right you see how the price is consolidating right there at equilibrium I just I just picked this and it just this stuff just work right the price was consolidating right there at equilibrium from that low right there so you'd be like okay the market sees this as fair value I'm gonna use this as my box cause boom fair value is there so I'm gonna use this as my internal box to the overall box right here this just say this can be your monthly box this can be your weekly box because you notice that the price just consolidating right there okay so you say i'm gonna go from this low to this high right and then you mark out your um pd arrays inside price right we gonna mark out our pd arrays inside price that's our um we're gonna scoot that and we're gonna scoot that over All right, scoot that over. I, don't, I hope I pushed that far enough. All right, so we're gonna scoot that over. We're marking out our PD arrays. This right here is um equilibrium. This gonna be our equilibrium right there. Close enough for government work. All right, range equilibrium. If this is boring, anybody? All right, right, right over there. In case y'all can't see where I'm pointing, right over there. If this boring anybody, <laughs> Tim, you got to be nicer to your viewers. <laughs> and I don't. <laughs> and I don't, especially when it comes to helping people out. All right. Um, 
we're going to we go ahead and mark this for real. So this is a bullish order block. This is an hourly bullish order block, but I don't have any. I don't have any hourly, th hourly things in here. So just ignore the fact that that says daily and just we just calling it an order block. OK, so then we got um right here. We got us a fair value gap right here. Um, this is a, a bullish fair value gap. I'm going to change the color of that since I picked daily on the last one. I want to have different colors. So I'm going to go with that right there. And then um, so prices here, um, we hit the equilibrium right there, pushed off. So um, the equilibrium line just going to be the sell side liquidity up under that. Right. So, boom, you um, what I just do redo that so boom now i'm, I'm getting to a question robinson <laughs> be quiet okay so now price is trading right around here right and you're looking at you're looking at the the um i'm gonna make this i'm gonna make this line right here the equilibrium line i want to make it so you can see it a little bit better so we're gonna make it um black and we're gonna make it um a little bit thicker we're going to make it a little bit thicker so you can see it better. Okay, now, y'all can see that right there. So now, this, this equilibrium line right here is this equilibrium right, line right there, right? So now, we're in a premium. Price is in a premium because this is equilibrium, right? And price is in a premium, right? So since it's in a premium, um. We like, okay, it's too close to the premium for me to be trying to, we done came down, touch equilibrium and bought. I really don't want to um sell nothing. So, because we're, we're, you know, it's like, I don't want to sell nothing right now. I want to buy something, but we're in the premium, right? I'm bullish. I, I ain't bearish. I'm bullish. I want to buy something, but we're in the premium. So when you're in the premium or equilibrium, right? From equilibrium, up you don't want to get too high but from equilibrium up right you're looking down through price for whatever pd arrays that you want to trade right so now you say i want to be a a, a a order block trader i want to be a fair value gap trader i want to be a breaker trader i want whatever kind of trader you want to be right standing on equilibrium just say you're standing here and you look down because you want to buy Right. So when you look down from price, down below price, right? His gold price happened to be right near equilibrium. So now we're looking down. I see a fair value gap. Looking down, I see I see another fair value gap in there. And looking down, I see an order block. Looking down, I see a big liquidity void. This is all the stuff I see to the downside of the PD arrays, right? So if you are a fair value gap trader, right? You're going to be looking at this fair value gap and this fair value gap. When you got two fair value gaps stacked on top of each other, y'all know how little Tim and Rogers do. I do not enter on the first one, right? I wait till it comes to the second one. And if it don't come to the second one and takes off from the first one, it leaves without me, right? So if you're a fair value gap trader, right, you wait for, and you want to buy, you will wait for price to come into the discount and come to if it was only one fair value gap you would just go have you take your trades on the touch on equilibrium or on the close right and then you got another one right down here that you got to be mindful of right it's another fair value gap right there right so if you're a fair value gap trader you're looking for you know what i'm saying the buy off of one of these fair value gaps depending on your risk tolerance and your stop loss will be below the low if you enter here, your stop loss is there. If you enter at that, your stop loss is there. Now, you say, Tim, forget fair, va forget fair value gaps. I hate them, right? I want to trade order blocks. Okay, fine. You just totally ignore these fair value gaps, even though you see them there. You're standing on equilibrium or just above it. You want to be a buyer. You're looking down, underpriced, looking for order blocks, right? So when it comes into the discount, right, if it bounces off that fair value gap, you like, I don't care. Go. I'm an order block trader. 
if it if it come down to this fair value gap, look what it just touched. It just touched the order block. You ain't going off of the fair value gap. You're going off the order block. And depending on how you take your order block trade on the touch, on the mean threshold, which is equilibrium. You hear me say it all the time. Or um, on the um, bottom of the order block, right? Either way it go. If you take it on the touch, on the mean threshold, then your, your stop will be under here. If you take it on the bottom, I don't know why you do that. Because once you blow through 50% of the order block, if you ain't in the trade already, I wouldn't be getting in it, right? It don't mean that it's not going to respect it, but that's just me. If it blow past there, I'm not entering. If I'm entering, it's going to be on the mean threshold, right? And then I just suffer through it. So now let's just say you a liquidity void um, trader, right? If you're looking at liquidity voids, same thing. The liquidity void in this instance is all the way up to the bottom of that candle right there right i'm sorry the bottom of that candle right there right because we traded both sides on that candle right there right both sides of that candle this whole little wick there it goes extends down past that and we traded both sides so it took care of the top half of that candle so now you got all this buy side there so that's a liquidity void all of this is the liquidity void, and we got another fair value gap in there. We're going to ignore that because we talk about liquidity voids. If you're a liquidity void trader, when price start coming down past um, equilibrium, you, you ain't stunned fair value gaps. If you're a liquidity void trader and you don't trade fair value gaps, I don't know what you're doing. But you ain't stunned the fair value gaps, right? So it passed the fair value gaps. I took my order block off. I don't know how I did that. Right. So, boom. Now, you, you ain't trading order blocks. They suck. You hate order blocks. So you ain't studying that. Right. You only want to trade liquidity voids. Right. This liquidity void is huge. You are filthy rich if you take a trade on the touch of this liquidity void. Right. Let's change the color of this liquidity void. We're going to make it. um This color right here. You are fifth the rich if you take it off the touch of this liquidity void because your stop got to come all the way down here below this low, right? At the mean threshold of the liquidity void. Again, if you trade liquidity voids but you don't trade fair value gaps, I don't know what you're thinking about. They they are, in essence, almost one and the same because if you, because the fair value gap is nine times a 10 going to be inside the liquidity void. If it's not on the same time frame, it's definitely on the lower time frames, right? And if you do it at the closure of the liquidity void, then you put your stop there. Now, just say you trade um, rejection blocks, right? So here, here, you got your rejection block at the um, previous low, right? You trade rejection blocks. So you got your rejection block all the way down here at the previous low. Why? Because the rejection block is the last thing that you hit. Why did it? Why didn't it copy? Okay. Because your rejection block is the last thing you hit prior to hitting the prior low, right? Um, let's just get this right here. Nope, I did weekly again. Let's go with um, monthly. Good enough, right there, right? So if you're a rejection block trader, you're waiting for it to come all the way back through all these PD arrays. Forget you, punk. Don't do fair value gaps. Get out of here, order block. Move liquidity void. I'm waiting on my rejection block. Then when it comes down to the rejection block, then you going long off of that, right? If you only trade prior lows, right? If you trade prior lows, you got a prior low here, right? Right there, you got a prior low there. You got a prior low there, right? This is a low too, but it's not a swing low. It can be counted as a prior low, but I, I count the swings. I don't count just the the load, I, I try to count the swings, but that is a low, right? You can count that too. That's a low, that's a low. But personally, I just count the swing lows and, and lows below consolidation. And then you got a prior low below the rejection block, right? So we move over and you're an order block trader. You're a um, fair value gap trader. Coming over here, if you took it on the second fair value gap right there, you went long on a set. You ignored the first fair value gap because you said it's one below. You went long there, right? You took some heat because you, you remember your stop was at below the low of the um order block, right? 
your stop was below the law of the order block. So if you was a fair value gap trader, you came in and you bought on the fair value gap here. You took a little bit of heat, but it didn't stop you out. And then it eventually, let's see if it eventually panned out for you. And it took a while to pan out. You know what I'm saying? You consolidated for a while. And then it took off way over here, right? These hourly candles. So if you went long on November 22nd at seven o'clock in the morning, it really didn't, you really couldn't get in there at seven o'clock on a, on a, what's the name? On a, whatchamacallit. Now futures, it, uh, oh yeah, it panned out pretty good. When I shrank it up, it looked bigger. Yeah. So it panned out for you at uh, the next day. <laughs> so it panned out the next day. Right. You would have had to hold it all through in real time. You'd have had to hold it all through the day. But that ain't what we talk about. What we talk about is uh, if you took the trade here. Right. It didn't stop you out. And then, yeah, that, that's pretty good there. If you went long there, that's kind of like almost a one to one. Let's see what that is. Let's see if that was worth it. Long position. You went long right there. Your stop was. Um, right below the order block right there. Ah, stop snapping. Your stop was right below the order block right there. And then it went to right here. You went in there. Let me see what it, that's the next day. The same day. We're trying to find the same day. Uh, this the same day right here. That's the highest it went that same day. Nope, 1500, 1600 right here. If you held it that long, which I doubt, but that's the highest, um, a one-to-one -one trade. That was a one-to-one -one trade. If you went off of, um, that, that second fair value gap right there, that was a one-to-one -one trade. If you went off the um, second fair value gap right there now, um, order block, you see, it came down and you say you took it off the mean threshold of the order block, right? So you went in at 50% of the order block. Come on, man. Find the mean threshold. Yes. Okay. So, ah, uh, come on, Tim. It's going to be close enough for government work because it's pissed me off. All right. So, you went on the mean threshold of the order block, stop loss at the bottom of the order block for that same day because it, it's a futures trade or it could be, um, what time did this order block hit? This order block hit, that hit, around the time yeah you could have took an options on that so you could have took an options on that so with the option you could have went back to your low hanging fruit right there because it's um you ain't got to get out of it um at night you know what i'm saying so to your low hanging fruit right there on the options trade that's a four that's a 4.75 to one trade um and then uh, for futures for the same why won't this move what in the habit okay so for futures for the same day time frame we're gonna go to the 1500 time that's the high back to equilibrium just going back to equilibrium boom that's what we're gonna do right back to equilibrium that's a 1.671 risk to reward trade right but the moral of the story is it don't matter what type of trade you are it's about knowing where you are, premium or discount, right? And then once you are premium or discount, then you focus on your PD array. That's your entry um, technique, right? So if, you're, if your entry technique is fair value gaps, you have your rules. If it's stacked fair value gaps, if I'm going in at the first one, I'm giving it until past the second one no i'm taking on more risk to reward or i'm gonna wait till it come to the second one or the third one depending on where it is and, and to mitigate the um risk to reward if i'm a liquidity void trader i'm gonna ignore all these other pd arrays until it come all the way down here in this liquidity void liquidity voids um they um they may get um they may get take longer to get back to if they're you know what i'm saying too far away from the price like this one here is like if it was a liquidity void this is a liquidity void right here right we got multiple candles right here that's a liquidity void right there 
right? So if you was taking it off a liquidity void, you could have took one off of this liquidity void here. If you was going to go 50% of the void or what, but it's all, it's all about identifying where your PD array is above and below price, right? Then are you bullish or bearish? If you bearish, wait until it comes into the premium and hits your PD array to sell. If you're bullish, wait till it comes into the discount and hits your PD array to buy, right? How do you get in sync with the algos to see where they're trading right now? Get in sync with looking for areas of consolidation. Okay, this is the area of consolidation. The algos are, this is where they're in sync right now. And realize the higher the time frame, the more weight it holds. The lower time frame, the less weight it holds. But get in sync, figure out your PD array, figure out where equilibrium is by getting in sync with the algos. If you bullish or bearish, if you bullish, wait till it go to the premium to hit your PD array. If you bearish, wait till it go. If you bearish, wait till it go to the premium and hit your PD array, then sell. If you bullish, wait till it go to the discount, hit your PD array and buy, and then um, stick to the plan. Stick to the plan. I know I got real long-winded on that. I jollipize. Anybody that don't like the fact that I got long-winded? Yep. Yep. <laughs>